Hi guys, I get asked an awful lot how you can do extremely well in a particular exam and what my top tips would be. So in this video, I'm actually going to talk through my top tips for scoring full marks in your IGCSE Edexcel physics paper. And we're going to be focusing in on paper one. Now remember that physics is heavily maths based. So you will be expected to remember to use multiple different equations. Remember, they do actually provide you with some of the equations. Here they are. Make sure you don't go to the trouble of learning these, therefore, because that would be ridiculous. You're provided with them. However, there is a large list of equations which you will need to learn off by heart. And if you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I like to make myself my own personal equation sheet. The moment that I'm told to begin in the exam, rather than turning to question one, I will spend a few minutes at the start of my exam creating my own list of equations. And look, there's a nice space here at the start of the paper that you can actually use to do that. And honestly, I think that it's a really good idea. It will stop you having to juggle multiple equations in your head and you'll be able to refer to it as soon as you get to an appropriate question. But what are those equations? Well, in a previous video, I talked through all the various physics equations and I showed you how I actually learned them. And so here they are summarized. And this is exactly what I would be drawing at the start of my paper to help me remember them. So we've got here, distance, speed and time. So distance equals speed times time. Here, area equals force divided by pressure. To find voltage, we do power divided by current. So we have all the different versions. And so it's quite straightforward to actually pick up the appropriate equation. And I'll actually show you how well it works in a practice exam paper. So what are my other top tips for doing well? Well, obviously make sure you've had breakfast if you've got a morning exam, had lunch if you have an afternoon exam. Try not to skip meals. Keep yourself really hydrated. Drink lots of water to avoid any headaches. Try and get a good night's sleep. As I said in my biology version of this video, don't worry too much if you don't sleep. Adrenaline will carry you through, so don't panic if you haven't slept so well. I also pointed out in my biology video that I like to make myself a last minute notes sheet of paper. The thing that I want to refer to just before I go into the exam hall, that could be the list of equations or it could be very specific topic based things or key definitions. I've always struggled a little bit with the wave topic so I would draw potentially a wave, I'd show what the amplitude is, I'd show a wavelength, I'd write the wave equation, which is wave speed equals frequency times wavelength. Frequency, what's that? Well, it's the number of waves per second. Remember that we need to learn both the transverse and longitudinal wave de definitions. So with transverse waves, vibrations occur parallel to the direction in which the wave is traveling. With longitudinal waves, vibrations occur perpendicular to the direction in which the wave is traveling. So I'm just writing some really brief notes. One thing I know they love to ask about is magnetism. It's quite a hard topic, this. So here I'd probably write my perfect answer for the motor effect, which remember it states that a current flows in a wire, creating a temporary magnetic field. This interacts with the permanent magnetic field of the bar magnets, which creates a force, which is known as the motor effect. In order to make this force stronger, what can we do? So to increase the force, we can use larger current, stronger magnetic field, more turns on the coil. So I'm really happy. I've got a really nice summary for that horrible four or five mark question on magnetism. Don't forget Fleming's left hand rule. This is gonna be embarrassing because I can't draw. That is really awful. Okay, so this is my thumb, which remember is the direction of the force. This is my first finger, which remember is the direction of the magnetic field. And then this is my second finger, which remember is the direction of the current. I might choose my notes to go over some of radioactivity, alpha, beta, and gamma. What are they stopped by? Well, alpha stopped by paper. Beta stopped by aluminium foil. Gamma stopped by lead sheeting. Which is the most ionizing? Well, that's alpha. Which is the least ionizing? Well, that's lead. Remember that when alpha decay occurs, 
two protons and two neutrons are lost. So what happens to the new element? Well, its mass number decreases by four and atomic number decreases by two. What about beta decay? Well, here, a neutron turns into a proton and therefore, because of that, because they have equal masses, the mass number is unchanged. Atomic number increases by one. I just want to show you how well that equation sheet works by looking at question two. So a bus travels along a straight road. The graph shows how the velocity of the bus changes during a short journey. So we have a velocity time graph, which means that distance is given by the area under the graph line and the acceleration is the gradient. So I'm just making little notes to make sure I don't screw up. State the velocity of the bus after 25 seconds. So that's six meters per second. How long is the bus stationary during its journey? So stationary means that it's traveling at zero meters per second. So that's this portion of the graph. So that's 10 seconds. State the equation linking acceleration, change in velocity and time taken. So stating the equation linking acceleration, change in velocity and time taken. Well, looking through my various equations, I can see that it's this one. It's up to you how you write the equations, whether you use symbols or write them out in full. Calculate the acceleration of the bus during the first 10 seconds and give the unit. So the first 10 seconds is this line along here. It's change in speed over time. I've already set up here that it's calculated by doing the gradient. So how do we find out the gradient? Well, we do change in y over x. So the change in y is 12. The x value here is 10. So 12 divided by 10 is 1.2. Remember the unit here is meters per second squared. State the equation linking average speed, distance moved, and time taken. If I look through my sheets, I can see it's this one. Doesn't matter what order I do it in, but I'm going to do speed equals distance divided by time. The bus moves a total distance of 390 meters during the journey. Calculate the average speed of the bus. So speed equals distance divided by time. We know the distance is 390 meters. What is the time? Well, it's 60 seconds. 6.5 meters per second. The bus travels further in the first 30 seconds of its journey than it does during the last 30 seconds. Explain how the graph shows this. Two marks. Remember that I've already written this pink note telling me that the distance is the area under the graph. So why does the bus travel further in this chunk of time compared with this chunk? Well, look at those areas under the graph. They're both trapeziums, but you can see that the area for the last 30 seconds is much smaller than the area for the first 30 seconds. So distance traveled is shown by the area under the graph. The area is greater for the last 30 seconds. So I hope I've shown you that you can make your life slightly more easier by making this formula sheet and referring to it. Don't forget your units. Remember the key units, so acceleration is meters per second squared. Weight or force is given by newtons. Resistance is given by ohms. Pressure is given by pascals. Make sure you've learned your units. You don't want to not put yourself in the best position because you didn't bother just spending five minutes referring to units. And obviously guys, remember if you want help with the actual content, Check out my all-in-one physics video. I'll go through every single spec point and make sure you take a look at my revision guides, which are in the shop, sciencewithhazel.com, because they contain all the perfect answers you could ever need, particularly good for definitions and long answer questions.